Good morning, my awesome friends and followers, and not to mention my impe impeccable, wow, my impeccable group of members. Thank you very much for your continued support on this channel of truth and transparency. Yes. Anyway, it's Saturday today, isn't it? Saturday the 28th of September. Yes, I've half received messages this morning. Um, yes, uh, and other YouTubers. And listen, uh, the other day I sent a message to a YouTuber. I, I'm going to be honest, and this is what I said. Stop sending me your shit. I don't need to see negativity from other platforms. If you're meant to be a friend of mine, don't send me the negative shit. I'm just... And, and, and they sent me a laughing face as a response. So in my opinion, there's a lot of people out there that pretend to be your friend, but they're not. They're the ones dragging down your mental health. And sometimes you just need to cut them off and you need to keep moving forward. And that's how you move forward. At the end of the day, we are all on a journey on our own. We do not need people, should I say fake friendship, to come along with us that just keep throwing shit at us. Does that make sense? I cut them off now, I just move forward. When I used to get, oh yeah, 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 oh yeah, it's okay. Look at the dramas that came with it were the ones, and I'm like, what? Anyway, listen, the only people I care about, right? is my close little circle of friends and my family. That's it. Um, other people, if they want to ask me questions or they ask for my help, I will try and guide. I will try and advise. I will help if I can. But I don't go looking for it anymore. Yep. Yeah, oh, sorry. Hello? Do you need a hand? Those days are over. I just sit back. I get on. I focus on the direction I'm going, which is that way, not that way. Yeah. Well, I have been up at the crack of dawn because I've, I've had a lot going through my head lately. Um, I'm really excited about this Saturday, that's a lie, this Sunday night's um, interview with, with uh, an ex-Special Forces legend. Um, so yesterday we did, uh, yesterday I got him on StreamYard. Uh, he, he doesn't live in the UK, so I want to point that out. Yesterday I got him on StreamYard. We worked out the volume and all. We just had a chat. We made sure it was working. And... Um, yeah, we did a test and it's, it's looking really positive. Believe it or not, and I will point this out to you, this individual is well known within the Special Forces community. Um, he's not well known in the public eye because he's never actually done, he's never put himself out there. That's the best way to look at it. And he's received calls and messages from Andy McNabb and Chris Ryan. I mean, uh, and they've been saying, that photograph that the young Colts put out there with the eyebrow, is that you? So there's a lot of people that are going to be tuning in to watch this, uh, which is going to be exciting. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Yeah. Cool Common Collective is the way he is. I'm trying to achieve the level of coolness that he's at, and I, I'll never reach it. I'm just saying. Anyway, so what's been going on in the news, right? Well, I'm going to be honest. Um, I tell you this, right? Be and I'll, this comes from an educated standpoint. I've been to war. I fought enemy. I've seen explosions. I know what it's like when there's missiles exploding around you, mortars going off and gunfire. I know it's hell. It's hell on earth. It should never happen. But unfortunately, unfortunately, our military men and women are just little pawns for our politicians to use to try and gain diplomacy through ammunition. And it's not a nice place to be in. Now, looking back on it, when I was involved in that type of stuff, I loved it. I was like, yeah, let's go. Let's, let's go that way. I think we can cut them off that way. Let's just, just, I remember that adrenaline rush. And I remember that feeling of going forward to kill somebody before they killed me. I remember that feeling. And it was euphoric. Um... So young men and women that are sent to do their job will always do their job 100%. They're brilliant at it. They're trained, they're professionals. They're... But as a civilian, looking back at this, veteran, wherever you want to call me, um, I see hurt, I see turmoil, I see, I see, I can now, hindsight, I can see the, I can see the trauma left in me and others that I fought with. Uh, and I can see how we're all damaged and people are damaged. There's no winners in war. Everyone loses. Innocent people die. And I don't know where I stand at the minute. Um, I support Israel. 
But I'm going to be honest, I, I think they're going too far. I mean, Beirut's in flames this morning with half the city destroyed. Um, Lebanon uh, is, is, I mean, we need to get peace. You can never bomb your way to peace. You can't do it. You can't bomb your way to peace. You're destroying places. It's anyway, there we go. I've just said it. Uh, hmm. Well, if you didn't know, in other news, Switzerland has launched its first ever and the world's first ever suicide pods. It looks like a little spaceship. In fact, if I remember, I seen it this morning. It reminds me of, do you remember back in the, is it the 80s or the 90s? You had Sinclair C5. We had those little like bikes that drove around London roads. It looked like a little, yeah. Well, anyway, the suicide pod looks like that. And a woman climbed into it yesterday, I believe. 64 year old woman. I do not know her background. I don't want to discuss it. But the fact that she climbed into the suicide pod, she she was given a code. She was given a code. And the code, um, the code only lasts for 24 hours. And, and then you've got to go through the whole process again. She must have had to tick every box to say that she wanted to give her life. The woman must have been filled with so much trauma to even contemplate that. Well, she got inside the suicide pod, which is in a, it's in lovely rural settings in Switzerland. She got into it. And when she got into it, it asked her three questions with a soothing voice. It got her identity. So it asked her her identity. It asked her to produce other information. And then the last question before it said, press this button if you want to die. It gave her a recap of what it means if she presses the button. If you press this button, it'll be the end of this. You will never see your family again. It could leave your family in turmoil. Those loved ones left behind. So it, it gave her a whole spiel of what would happen if she pressed the third button. And she pressed the third button. She knew exactly what she was doing. And the pod then sealed. It filled it with nitrogen. And it starved her of oxygen. And uh, the woman died. Um, suicide pods. I mean, even thinking about it, it's quite... Uh, it's really quite sad. Really emotional, Phil, talking about that. It's just... I read it this morning. It's just... <sighs> what a poor woman. Anyone that contemplates suicide, you know, then that throws me back to a couple of years ago, doesn't it? When I contemplated it. Being attacked daily, 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 daily. Your marriage falls apart. You fear of losing your children. It's just, it's just, yeah, there's, there, there's so much. Anyway, your head's filled with trauma from different things happening to you. It can help. The only thing that stops people, and from personal experience, the only thing that stops people from suicide and it seems shitty to say this, is A, a very good friend who knows what you're going through and, and sticks with you, and B, a pet, like a dog or a cat. Because they are so calming in situations that are so damaging to your mental health. A pet just getting up beside you and sitting on your arm or sitting at your feet can change your whole outlook. That's why I need to get another dog to replace my Zeus. Yeah, yeah. Right. Let this be a lesson to you out there. I want to point this out. Prior to the election, prior to the election, there was a lot of shit being said from different politicians, what they were going to do, how they were going to do it. The only one that stuck by what he said he was going to do is so far, whether you like this or not, Nigel Farage from the Reform Party. Because the Conservatives have fallen apart. They're in the gutter. They're fighting over... I mean, they still think they're important. They wanted a TV debate to see who was going to be the leader of the party. No one cares what you think anymore. But here's one for you. Labour. Sir Keir Starmer. Two-tier two -tier Keir. Keir Stasi Starmer. I mean, surely he can be removed for lying, completely lying about everything. He's let the prisoners out. He's brought more people across. The boats have increased. 5.42 billion now for illegal migration and asylum seekers. He's taken away the pensioners' car, sorry, pensioners winter fuel allowance. And what else has he done? He promised all the students that he would scrap 
student fees. Well, guess what? He's increased them. So all those students out there that voted for care, you deserve what you get because you wouldn't listen. And this is the problem with students. They've got no life experience. They've got no life experience. They've added no value to anything. They're just thinkers. They're thinkers. And they're, and they're sort of like, it's like a, a magician going, mm, if you vote for Labour, oh, wickety, wickety, boo, one. And, and students are thick. Yes, they can read books. Yep, yep. It says in chapter 142 that if we continue down this road, it will lead to a tree. I mean, students just, students are like sponges. They, they soak everything up and Labour are brilliant at selling their shit. So all you students that voted for Labour, congratulations, your student fees have increased. Yes. So you've so Labour's now lost the vote of the pensioners and it hopefully has lost the vote of the students. It's lost the vote of the British, but it always has the vote of the asylum seekers, the refugees and economic migrants. So that's why they need to continue to arrive so they can continue to vote for them. I think I just had a little bit of a mental health explosion there, didn't I? There we go. Talking of suicide, which I, it's not a word I like to use, Philip Schofield, yeah, he'll be back on our screens this morning. He'll be back on our screens soon on Channel 5, uh, Castaway, where uh, I said the other day he was away with cameras and all this here. Well, guess what he's now come out with? When I was on Castaway, I had everything in place for a suicide attempt. Yeah, but you didn't, did you, Philip? You didn't. You're back now and you're telling us your story. Maybe you could write a book, an autobiography, another one. Challenge Jordan. She thinks she's got 12. I think Philip's got three. It's sad. It's sad that Philip Schofield even contemplated that. But this is what happens whenever you get caught. You're not shameful of what you've done, like Hugh Edwards. You're shameful that people found out. It's a difference, isn't it? Of course it is. Uh... And Muhammad al fayas son, who at first was going, what? These allegations are nonsense. My dad would never do this. This is nonsense. There's been that many allegations now come out that his son has went, I'm stunned. I'm absolutely horrified. This has stained the memory of what I thought about my dad. I I, I didn't know. And, and you know what? Um... You've got to bear in mind that, um, yes, it's coming out now that Muhammad al-Fayed was a bit like a monster towards women and uh, the, what he did. But, you know, imagine how his son feels. Not Dodie, clearly. He's with Diana. I mean, imagine how his son feels, thinking, I never knew any of this, and this is shocking. I'm, I'm horrified. I mean, not everyone is complicit in, in other people's behaviours. So, you know... I hope that he doesn't get trolled or stalked or attacked. You know, he's just a son who's found out his dad was an arsehole, isn't he? Talking of a-holes, let me put this out. Yes. The artist, formerly known as Prince, the fake veteran, has been spotted at a New York City tattoo parlor. Yes, just days after his 40th birthday. I wonder what tattoo he's going to get. A crown saying twat? And I, I don't know. Um... Do you know what would be funny? If he got like a, a proper veteran's tattoo with like, a, I don't know, um, picture, I don't know, like a queen and maybe a helicopter coming in and soldiers walking beside graves and a skull and redness for the blood of the land. Or maybe he could get just the faces of 30, 25 Taliban that he killed. Look at them, all these guys. I did this. Yep. But we don't know, do we? We don't know what he'll get. Who cares? It's in the paper. Paper just right. I don't know. Why is it even a story? Doesn't matter. Well, listen, my wonderful people, I'm going to shoot on and I'm going to have a wonderful day because that is the mindset I have set myself. Wonderful day, wonderful day, wonderful day. Anyway, listen, have a great day, people. Uh, thanks for supporting my channel. Thank you to those who have decided to become a members of the channel. It's amazing. Uh, I've got about 155 of you now, which is fantastic. So thank you. Yes. What a group of people. And by the way, um, I have made a video, which I'm going to upload today, for my members only. Uh, I've saved it on my phone, did it yesterday, and it'll be going up this afternoon. But listen, have a wonderful day. Stay safe. Keep your circle tight. Keep your enemies out. Delete negativity and move forward. Take care.